So in this clip, I'm going to introduce the use of functions, which is extremely important in MATLAB. It's basically another word for outsourcing bits of code that are either long and tedious and difficult to look at, or bits of code that you will use on different numbers of occasions and want to reuse. Let me first show you a little bit what this means in principle before we actually do some program, uh, programming. Let's assume you have a script, a bit of a bit of code, and let's call that because that's what we call it later, second.m. Okay, so this is just a script. Uh, you already know that you should collect all your commands in a script. And so this is just some file here. And in here you do some calculations, perhaps you import some data. And uh, let's say as part of this, you somehow define two matrices. A is equal to something, B is equal to something. And then you want to do something with A and B. Let's say I calculate some statistics. It doesn't really matter at this stage what it is. And what we're going to do is these calculations, we're going to outsource them into what we call a function. Okay, and that will be in a different file, so therefore a different little box here. And that function we shall call, let's say we call it stats.m. And this is a function. Now, basically what we do in our script file is we will call this file this function, sorry, stats, but then we need to usually, and I'll be a bit more precise about that, we want to apply that function to our two matrices A and B, let's say. And we, I just use two, it could be more, this could be more, it could also be only one input, and there will be some output from this function and let's call let's say we call that output C and D. It's really irrelevant what that is at the time. You should try and understand it in uh, in its abstract way. And then as we go on, we will want to do something more with C and D. Okay. So what's this function look like? So here that file stats.m that will start with the name function. And then there will have to be some outputs. The name of the function is stats, and that needs to be, that is very important, that needs to be exactly the same name. And then there will be some inputs. Now, here we already said we want, in this for this particular example, we want two inputs. So let's call them in one and in two, it could be any names, and here two outputs, let's call them out one and out two. And the function will end with the command end. So in here, inside this function, there will be some calculations some calculations that use the input variables in one and in two. Okay, so there could be a lot of different commands in here. Let me just highlight these with blue. Okay. And so there could be many of these of these functions, but importantly, not necessarily at the end, but um, most likely somewhere at the end, we will also have to define our two output variables. Okay, that will be something out one and out two will be some variables, some terms most likely resulting or depending on these in some complicated way on these input variables. 
so these let me just use this that will this blue these two variables that will have to somewhere that will have to be defined and that will be most likely some function of these blue input variables so what happens if we write our script and we call this function well basically what happens is that matlab in a way includes this entire command into this code okay or it's basically it outsources all the calculations here into this little into this other file so in our case what will happen is that our in one variable will then take on the values of a and the in two variable will take on the values of b but inside this function there will be no capital a or capital b it will just be called in one and in two okay for our particular call, in1 will equal a and in2 will equal b. And then we'll go through these calculations. The function stats will calculate out1 and out2 and will basically then hand these two values back. And from now on, these two values will be called c and d. So c will take the value of out1 and d will take the value out2. And then here you can continue on doing some calculations that will include uh, C and D. Okay, so some uh, again, I just do something that doesn't make sense. Perhaps you want to calculate C plus two times D, if that makes sense. Perhaps not. Okay, so from now onwards, you can use C and D in this script out1 and out2 and in1 and in2 will be unknown. These four variables will only be known inside the function. In the script, what we know is a and b. That will be used as in1 and in2 inside the function. And once the function has finished, it will hand us back out1 and out2. But now out1 and out2 will be called c and d. So this is the basic thing that will happen with a structure. Now let's actually program one. So we need two files, a script and a function. And we said that so you, to write a function you can actually click new function and it will already have the, the necessary stuff which you want. We said we want to call it stats and input arguments. In fact what we're now gonna say is we're only gonna use one input argument. Let's call it um, in data and let's say our output let's say we have two outputs we have the uh, memes and the standard deviation so that, that already tells us what we want to do is we want to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Now, in this comment straight after function, that's very important that you say what you you basically describe your function here. Let's go to repeat the name actually, and then say describe what you need as inputs. Okay, input uh, you want a matrix with data. I say that because I know what I want to do with this function and then output is uh, the first one means will be a vector of column means so if you have several columns in, in data we will have one mean for every column that's what I want to do and then stdef will be the uh, vector of column standard deviations. So, and then you can say, you could also say who wrote it and when, but let's do that only. So basically what we want is we hand in, in data and then we want to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for each column. And perhaps we also print it. Um, so, Firstly, what we want is we want to know how many columns we have in in here. So you know we can use the size command. So if you say size in data 
what we get here is, let's say we call that n and k, n will now be the number of rows, and k will be the number of columns. And now I'll do a loop. The calculations could be done without a loop as well, but you'll see why I want to loop. And we have to do these calculations for k columns, because we have k columns in our data. So then we want to save the means, so our, we want to hand out means and stdef. We already know what dimensions that should have. They should have k rows and one column. So for each column, we'll have one mean and the same for the standard deviation. So we'll do this. Now in each loop, we're going to calculate the i-th. So the loop goes from i equals 1 to k. So in the first loop, we want the mean of in data all rows and the i-th column. The first loop that is going to be uh, the first column and I want to do basically the same for the standard deviation, stdef, and the command is std. If you don't remember the command for standard deviation, you could just quickly type S help std, and you can see that what comes up is the help function, so std is indeed the right name, and it calculates the standard deviation of a vector, in fact, a sample standard deviation. So now what we also want to do, I just tell you I want to do that, is we want to uh, display something. Let's say um, we display variable and then just which variable we have. And then in a vector, we also say, or in the same row, what the mean of that variable is, and stdef, what the standard deviation is. We just calculated this. So means, in the first loop, that will be mean, first element of means, and here the first element of stdef. So, and then we loop through this, and by the end, we have defined all our means and stdef, and that will be handed back. Okay, so means and stdef is our out and out two. Here we only have one input function, we only have one in one. In our example, that's, sorry, in our example, that is in data, underscore data. So now we need to save this. We need to save it as stats.m, it already defaults to that because MATLAB is sometimes clever. You see, it has a function, so it has a, a slightly different little symbol. So now we need our script file. So we said we call that save as second, or whatever other name you want. Let's say we have a, we define a matrix A, as random numbers. These are uniform random numbers. And let's say 200 rows and six columns. Now, I think it's possibly a good habit to start all scripts with clear all, I think it's a semicolon here, and CLC to clear the workspace and the command window. So we define A as having 200 column rows and six columns, and now we want uh, the means of A, we want to calculate the means of all columns of A and the standard deviations of all columns of A, and we do that by using our just written function stats, and the input in this is just A. Okay, so going back to our little scheme. So we just now defined one matrix A, we hand that into stats and we have two outputs. 
I didn't call them C and D, I called them mean A and standard deviation A. I could have called them C and D as well. So when we now run this, two things should happen. Hopefully no mistake, I hope so. And then as this line five is executed, MATLAB will basically go into this file and do everything here. Part of what it should do is that it should display things and then afterwards, at the end of the code, we should have a vector mean A and standard deviation A available in which we have all the mean standard deviations. Then we could continue on and do some calculations with it. So let's run the code. Okay, perfect. It all worked. So you can see that we have variables 1 to 6. This is the mean and this is the standard deviation. Of course, since we have uniform random variables, variables uh, yeah, uniformly distributed on the interval between 0 and 1, the mean is always close to 50, uh, sorry, 0 0.5. Okay, and that's the standard deviation of a uniform random variable. So when I now change this, you, let's say we use lots more data, let's use 20,000 and perhaps only four columns. If we run through it, we'll only get four of these lines. Let's briefly think what should happen to the means. As we have many more observations, the mean is possibly going to be much closer to 0.5 on average at least. Um, so if you run through this code again, you see we only have four rows and now the mean is always very, very close to 0.5. So this is how you use a function. Now on the website, uh, from the website, you can download another function, OLSS, and you can use that to estimate regressions, but the basic principle is the same.